Hey you guys, I'm so excited. Today I'm going to share with you how I made this beautiful charcuterie board. Now the light is not that great in here now because it's kind of late, the sun has already set, but I'm telling you the colors are stunning. I will insert a photo of it in my house where I have better light, where I took a photo of it. Really, really pretty buckeye wood epoxy. It has a blue tone on one side and then it has a purplish tone on the other side. This charcuterie board will be available on my website www.skylarewing.store. It's three quarter inch thick, 12 inches in diameter. Perfect charcuterie board for Father's Day if you're looking for a gift. And stay tuned because I will show you a special abrasive paste and finish that I use for this to get this really cool, perfectly smooth um, surface without having to sand too crazy, sand grits or anything like that. Look at that finish, a really, really pretty, perfectly glass smooth and uh, without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now this is the piece of wood I'll be working with. This is a piece of back eye and I already went ahead and cleaned it up. I use a chisel, remove all the bark. You do not want the bark on epoxy projects because that's where your um, weak point will be and your project could crack there. And then I cleaned it up all on the inside and then with a the Dremel I went into all those wormholes and all those crevices and make sure it's really clean one because you know you don't want to have dirt floating on top of your resin and making a mess of your project and two like I said you don't want a weak point you want your epoxy to bound really really well with the wood and be strong so that's why we cleaned up our plank. Now to be clear I am not well versed in this whole epoxy word I just started recently and everything I know, I know from Derek uh, Smiley Woodworks. If you want to learn how to do this kind of projects and learn it the good way, go check out his channel. Like I said, it's Derek Smiley Woodworks. And he does tons and tons of epoxy projects. I just started recently, so this is the way I'll be doing this. But everything I know, it's from him. So because of the shape of my piece of wood, I know that I want to use a round mold because it would be a shame to cut this into tiny pieces and make it into a rectangle. I really like this void over here, so I wanna make sure I keep that. The mold I'll be using is the 12 inch from Crafted Elements, not sponsored. I purchased this with my own money. So now I'm gonna bring you to my table and see how we set up this in the mold. So let's get our mold out. Very uh, strong mold, very heavy, very sturdy. So my piece will go something like, well, as you can see, my piece doesn't really fit. It's a little bit too big for this mold. So you might think, how are you gonna trim that to make it work? Well, first of all, I wanna make sure that I keep the parts that I really want. And like I said, I really like this void over here, so I don't wanna cut anything from there. Also here, I think it will be a nice void that will fill in with epoxy. So I don't want to cut anything from there either. So I'll cut mostly from here. So the way I'll figure out how much to cut and in which shape is by first making a mold of your tray. Now, this is a trick that, again, I learned it from Derek and uh, it saved me so much time and trouble. So this is a mold I used some bad epoxy that I couldn't use for anything else and just poured a thin layer into my mold and as you can see it fits there perfectly. Now this mold, if I can get it out now, this mold is going to help us trim our piece to fit perfectly. So the way I will do that, I'll put my piece on the table and then I'll put my mold on top, make sure that, you know, I get a little bit of room here. And it looks like I can almost fit the whole thing if I just cut that one piece over there. Let me flip it the other side. The other side is wider because it has this flare outwards. So, almost. I think I need to cut a little bit from this side. I hope you can see that there. Let me see if I can bring you in closer. So I don't know if you can see, I have a little bit sticking out in here and then this part over here. So everything else looks like it will fit nicely. So now I'll take a pencil and I'll use this template to trace where I need to cut on the pencil. So 
ta-da! Now we have our template. I'm going to go to the bandsaw and cut those portions out and then we'll see how it fits into our tray. All right, so I trimmed those two pieces out and let's see if our piece fits in our mold now. And ta-da! Perfect fit, I say. Now a good rule of thumb for an epoxy project is you want to have about 70 to 80 percent of wood to epoxy and I think that just gives you a more pleasing to the eye project. You don't want to do like mostly epoxy and just put a little bit of wood. Now it's time to mix the epoxy. I'll be mixing my epoxy into this giant <laughs> container and I'll be using this on a drill and that's how I'll be mixing mine. The epoxy I'm using, it's a three to one epoxy. That means I'll be using three parts A to one part B. The reason why I'm using this giant bucket is because I only have these guys or these little guys. And these are too small for the amounts that I need. This is too big, but I'm gonna go with too big. I am going to mix it up. Then we're gonna take it to a vacuum and pull out all the bubbles. And then um, we'll split it into the smaller cups. We'll add colors, we'll do different colors and then we'll go from there. And uh, there's many, many calculators online to figure out how much epoxy you need for your project. Um, there's also the rice method where you can fill a container with rice, put the rice around your wood onto your mold and that amount of rice that you need to fill out your mold, that's how much epoxy you need. In my case, I'm not even gonna worry about any of that. I'm going to make way more than I need because whatever I have leftovers, I'll make it into coasters. So. I'm okay with making more than I need. What I don't want is I don't want to make less than I need. So I'm going to measure my epoxy by weight and bring a scale and we'll weigh it. All right, you can see there we introduced tons of bubbles in it and now it's time to take it to the vacuum chamber and pull out all those bubbles. And we need to get rid of those. All right, so I turned off the pump and this pressure machine now it's at negative 28. And as you can see, it's pulling all those bubbles out and it pops them. So right now I'm gonna let this sit for five minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to go and clean my mold. I'm gonna use some denatured alcohol on a paper towel and wipe it clean and I'll get all the pigments ready so then we can mix in the pigments, the color and get to the fun part. All right, it's been about four minutes. So I am going to release the pressure from here now, see what our epoxy is looking like and then start mixing the colors. And if we look at our epoxy now, it's crystal clear. Just a couple of bubbles at the top, but you can see my hand, you see how clear it is? So what I'm gonna do now is go put it in those smaller cups, mix in some colors, and then I'm gonna run it again through the vacuum just because as I introduce colors and mix it, I will introduce bubbles. So I really wanted to have no bubbles. So let's go back to the shop. All right, now here we are back at my bench and I have some popsicle sticks for mixing in the colors. I have my cups. Um, I have two brands of uh, pigment that I like to use. This is from Black Diamond. I'll be using this blue shade. This one, it's like a black blue. Um, and then this other brand, it's kind of like a deeper blue. And maybe we'll even mix some of this red color because the red mixed with the blue is gonna give us a purplish tone. And this one, it's interesting. It has purple and green and blue and all kinds of crazy hues. So let's get mixing the pigment. So here I am back and there's our bubble free epoxy. We are ready to start pouring. I did clean the mold and I also sprayed it with some, um, what do you call that? With some um, spray so it like demolds easily and it doesn't destroy the mold. So let's place this in here. I have the feeling that maybe I mixed too little epoxy. Might have to mix more. We'll see. This is the moment of truth. Going to pour two colors at the same time. Mm 
you push some in those holes. A little light, a little dark. I really want to fill in these holes. Then I have this weight that I put some tape on it. And then I have this squares that I bought from Crafted Elements that epoxy will not stick to it. So I want to make sure I'm putting my weights in here and this board does not float to the top. It stays there on the bottom. Maybe I'll put both of them. Something like that. And now I'll be using my heat gun and just pop up all the bubbles that are still there. And I'll be doing this every 30 minutes for the next couple of hours. And then I'll let it cure for about three days. And then I'll see you back when I will demold it. All right, you guys, you saw me get the board out of the form and I was afraid to run it through the planer because my planer has some horrible snipes sometimes and this was already a fairly thin board. It's three quarter inch right now. And um, so I ran it through my drum sander, flattened it up and uh, I ran it um, from 80 grit sandpaper all the way to 220. I changed the paper. And then I went from 220 to 600 by hand with an orbital sander. Uh, when you send epoxy after every time you're done with one grit of sandpaper, make sure you use a damp cloth, wipe off all the dust and then move on into the next uh, sanding grit because epoxy is very, very prone to scratching. So, you know, you don't want to swirl around. That's where you get those swirl marks from the sander if you don't wipe off the, the dust. So it's looking pretty nice. This is what is looking right now. Um, like I said, I did sand it up to 600 grit and uh, normally you would do wet sanding from 600 all the way to 3000, 5000, 10,000, depends on how glossy you want it to finish and how much work you want to put into it. But I will not be wet sanding it. I'll be using my abrasive paste. This is my abrasive paste that is made especially for epoxy. Uh, for polishing epoxy that way I won't be able to I won't have to do any wet sanding I'll just do this and then I'll apply my carnauba wax finish on it so that's what we'll be doing and uh, this abrasive paste uh, fun fact was created by accident I was trying all kinds of formulas for the wood turning abrasive paste and I sent some samples to Derek Derek Smiley Woodworks he's a wood turner and uh, he tried this one for wood turning and he said it was not abrasive enough and we worked on the recipe and made one that is perfect for wood turning so if you're a wood turner go check out the one that is on the website right now that one is made with tripoli and uh, pumice this one is made with diatomaceous earth and beeswax and tripoli so um, he you know said that this one was not abrasive enough but then he did try this one on epoxy and he said skylar this thing works amazing on epoxy and I think you have a new product that you can market. And then I tried it on epoxy and it does really do a really good job. Now, hold on a second. Now you could also get specifically made for epoxy, this kind of rubbing compounds. I have this one from Total Boat and these ones are fantastic as well, just like my abrasive paste for epoxy. The problem with these ones is, let me see if I can show you here. I'm just gonna, oh, you can see it already right now on my hands. This um, abrasive, this rubbing compound, it's a white, uh, has a white pigment, white powder in it. 
and that could really leave marks on your wood, especially when you're working with darker wood. So those are kind of things that are made for epoxy um, that are white, they work perfectly on epoxy, but don't use it on wood because it could stain your wood. You get that milky kind of nasty looking stuff. This one, like I said, specifically designed for epoxy to work with wood. Um, the ingredients are right on the can, mineral oil, the atomaceous earth, beeswax, and tripoli. So it will not, it will be good for both uh, wood and the wax. So I'm going to put this on. I'm going to bring you in close and then we'll wipe it off and I'm going to use my carnauba wax and I'll be polishing that one too. I won't talk during this. I'm just going to bring you in close and let you watch the process and then we'll see what the board looks like in the end. So here is our finish board. This board is going to be available on my website if you're interested. Again, this is 12 inches in diameter and three quarter inch thick. And check out that finishing paste and wax. There are zero scratches. Everything is so smooth and nice. I think it did a fantastic job and we did not have to do all that epoxy fine dust and wet sanding and you know. I think this is perfect. It's kind of purplish on the back. I think that's the back. I mean, you can use it however you please, but that is the back of the board. Um, I hope you can see it. And here is what I consider the front because I do like the blue better. I feel like it's really a nice color contrasting with the warm tone of wood. And I think the wood is Bakai. So Bakai wood and then epoxy. It could be a charcuterie board, so you can use it as it is. You can make a lazy Susan out of it. You can make a little uh, stand where you put a plant on it. So like a little planter. I think it's super cute. I would use it as a charcuterie board. Now, I hope this was helpful for you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyler Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.